On today's episode, NASA has a new problem with the ISS, while we also get an interesting new update on the SpaceX Starship launch. Elon Musk is in a big hurry right now to destroy the International Space Station. This relatively sudden pivot in space policy might seem a bit strange at first, especially considering that his company, SpaceX, is already the key player in a $1 billion existing plan to retire and deorbit the ISS. But Elon has been into a lot of strange behavior recently. NASA released their detailed plan for ISS deorbit in the summer of 2024, which maintains station operations up to the year 2030, at which point the station will be abandoned and the orbit will be allowed to decay naturally. It's going to slowly fall back down. And this will go on for another year, using the station's propulsion system to guide the equipment down in a controlled path. Then, for the final push down into Earth's atmosphere and ultimate destruction of the ISS, NASA will use a specialized deorbit vehicle, one that they've already agreed to pay SpaceX $800 million to build and is expected to be delivered by 2028. The SpaceX vehicle will steer the ISS into a location on the Pacific Ocean known as Point Nemo. It's about halfway between New Zealand and Chile, and it's the furthest point from any landmass sounds like a pretty reasonable plan, but Musk has decided to begin complicating the process with his post on X last week. Quote, it is time to begin preparations for deorbiting the space station. It has served its purpose. There is very little incremental utility. Let's go to Mars. This still leaves Elon's intention up for interpretation. It's entirely possible that by beginning preparation, he meant starting to build the deorbit vehicle. This would be a souped up version of the Dragon spacecraft with a huge cluster of rocket engines packed into the trunk section that would provide the thrust necessary to control the 1 million pound space station. So in theory, this is what SpaceX is supposed to be doing, although there is no indication that they have begun that construction process. Then we have Eric Berger of Ars Technica asking Elon to clarify in a follow-up, are you suggesting that the ISS be deorbited prior to 2030? Elon replies, the decision is up to the president, but my recommendation is as soon as possible. I recommend two years from now. So what Elon's proposing here isn't exactly radical, it's around a, I guess a 60% acceleration of the existing timeline, one that would now hinge on his own new hardware being ready one year ahead of schedule. And this is the spaceflight industry that we're talking about, where nothing ever happens on time, let alone coming early. And to that, there's the notoriously optimistic timelines of Musk himself, which applies to pretty much every company that he owns, not just SpaceX. And we've pretty much learned that to get a realistic guess at when a thing will actually happen, you've got to at least double the amount of time that Elon says that thing will take. So with all of that into consideration, Elon is basically just proposing the plan that was already proposed last year and SpaceX agreed to and is getting paid $800 million for. Only this time around, Elon appears to be creating the perception that everything was his idea. It's also worth noting that there are already many contracts for ISS operation up to the year 2030 that have already been signed and paid for by NASA and private entities, almost all of which are contracted to SpaceX. Anyway, the whole ISS deorbiting message aligns with a new approach that Elon appears to be taking as he positions himself as a leader in the American space program, a pivot from contractor to decision maker. This is exemplified in the Stranded Astronaut Saga, and that's kind of how we ended up here in the first place. In an interview with Fox News where Elon sat alongside President Trump, both figures supported the idea that NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams were stranded on the ISS after the failed test flight of their Boeing Starliner capsule that resulted in the return of the spacecraft with no crew on board. The stranded narrative has been pushed very heavily by media all around the world. While both NASA and the astronauts themselves have pushed back on that 
that categorization, basically saying that everyone involved is well aware of the perils of human spaceflight, and with each mission, they expect the unexpected. Butch and Sonny also pushed back on assumptions that they were either dying of boredom or of malnutrition by completing a five-hour spacewalk on the station in January. Regardless, Elon Musk told the interviewer that the Starliner astronauts were stranded last year and that SpaceX could have rescued them at the time, but President Joe Biden prevented that from happening for entirely political reasons. Again, this fails to mention an existing plan that was put in place by NASA, which again features SpaceX as the primary contractor involved, and a return SpaceX Dragon capsule for Butch and Sunny was launched in September of 2024, with a scheduled return in February 2025. That Dragon vehicle was sent up to the ISS with two empty seats to make room for Butch and Sunny to fly home. Butch and Sonny's dragon did not return in February, as originally planned, not because of Joe Biden, but because SpaceX had problems with the manufacturing of a new dragon capsule that would send new crew members up to replace the crew members who are coming back down. Since Elon didn't include any of this context in his statement about the rescue operation, it could in a way be perceived as being deceptive to a wider audience, who are very unlikely to know any of the details that we've just laid out here so far. That's how European astronaut Andreas Mogensen seems to have perceived Elon's statement, and he expressed that in a post on X writing, What a lie. Elon responded hours later by writing, quote, You are fully R-worded. SpaceX could have brought them back several months ago. I offered this directly to the Biden administration and they refused. Return was pushed back for political reasons. Idiot. Mogensen is a Danish astronaut who served as commander of the ISS in 2023 and 2024, where he was also the pilot of a SpaceX Dragon capsule. In the past, Mogensen has served as flight engineer of a Soyuz mission to the ISS as well. American astronaut Scott Kelly described Mogensen as, quote, one of the most honest, trustworthy, and honest people I've ever met. So it would be safe to say that Mogensen is in reality neither mentally disabled or low IQ. Regardless, Kelly's defense of his fellow astronaut, saying that Mogensen does not deserve the kind of disrespect contained in Musk's insult, also attracted attention from Elon, who responded to Kelly, quote, Yes, he does. He's an idiot who publicly attacked me, despite having no idea what actually happened. By the way, your brother claims to be independent, but is just a dem donor shill. Two hours after lashing out at both astronauts, Musk announced his accelerated timeline for destroying the ISS. So, I don't know man, I'll let you make of that whatever you will. But meanwhile, SpaceX has completed their investigation into the unscheduled destruction of the Starship upper stage on the company's seventh test flight of their new rocket system. The results support initial information from SpaceX and Elon Musk that a propellant leak in the liquid oxygen system caused a buildup of pressure in the area above the engine heat shield and below the bottom of the oxygen tank. This is known as the attic, an area that is supposed to remain unpressurized during flight. This leak occurred two minutes after the Super Heavy booster's hot stage separation. Two minutes after the leak began, there were sustained fires raging in the attic section. This fire triggered controlled shutdown sequences on all but one of the Starship's engines. This fire ultimately led to a loss of communication with the ship. SpaceX writes that, Contact with Starship was lost prior to triggering any destruct rules for its autonomous flight safety system which was fully healthy when communication was lost. The vehicle was observed to break apart approximately three minutes after loss of contact during descent. Post-flight analysis indicates that the safety system did trigger autonomously and breakup occurred within flight termination system expectations. So that's interesting in that a fire at the bottom of the ship was able to knock out the communication system that is known to be in the top of the ship. And apparently this gigantic rocket was on fire and flying out of control through space with no communication to the ground for three minutes before it finally exploded itself. 
itself. SpaceX explains the leak that caused all of this by writing, quote, The most probable root cause for the loss of the ship was identified as a harmonic response several times stronger in flight than we had seen during testing, which led to increased stress on hardware in the propulsion system. Basically means stuff vibrated more than we thought it would and then it broke. And this is why we've seen the company perform extended length static fire testing on the ground with their next Starship vehicle, making sure that this new one won't shake itself to death. In addition to that, SpaceX has added a new ventilation and fire suppression system to the attic of the Starship that will use nitrogen gas to clear any potential oxygen leaks. There has also been a slight modification to the Super Heavy booster to upgrade the engine igniters. That's why we saw one engine out of 13 fail to light up for the boost back burn on Flight 7. The engine was healthy and it did ignite for the landing burn, but for the boost back it simply failed to spark, which should be fixed now. Now. SpaceX is targeting Friday, February 28th at 5.30 p.m. U.S. Central Time for the next launch of Starship, pending regulatory approval. This mission will attempt to achieve all of the same milestones as Flight 7, including the deployment of Starlink satellite mass simulators as a suborbital payload.